What up, everybody? It's iPadBeatMaking.com here today. And today we're going to go through MTS, try to make a beat in it. But more importantly, I'm going to show you my workflow and how I like to operate in it, some of the different tips and tricks that I like to go ahead and implement in order to have the most efficient workflow with using MTS. Now, if you don't know, MTS, I believe, is the best DAW on iOS for like trackpad keyboard support. It supports scrolling. It's got keyboard shortcuts. It's incredible, but it's also no slouch when it comes to touch as well. For instance, the piano roll has these really nice handlebars that are similar to that of Nano Studio 2. And down here, you've also got a keyboard that you can customize with any AUV3 MIDI effect that you want. So for instance, you could go with the stock piano here, which is playable on a QWERTY, or you could go ahead and choose any AUV3 MIDI app that you have and get as crazy as you want. You could put Scalar down here, but my favorite thing to use down here is sequence keys when I'm going to be using this in touch mode because it scale locks it's got velocity sensitivity in terms of where you press the key up or down here you can change the width of the keys you can change the color of the keys to match the vibe of your track you know there's just so many different things you can do with this um so yeah it's not bad with touch either it's a very modular daw in terms of like what kind of workflow you want to adopt so it's a very capable DAW with that kind of stuff. And one thing that's really important for me is the fact that you are able to transfer this onto desktop and keep going with your session. And certain plugins will even transfer as well. But with all that said, let us go ahead and start with a new song. And we'll go ahead and add a track we'll add a midi track now here's the thing um if you want to know how to set up like the song properties like how many effect slots and whatever you just go to song properties under song and you can set these up now these are going to be different depending on the size of your ipad what ipad model you have and things like that um i'm doing this on a 12.9 ipad so i get the preview window here and probably a few more effect slots if you're using like an iPad mini, for instance, you'll get a few less effect slots and you won't get this preview window here, but it's still really good for touch, especially if your plan is to eventually bring this to another iPad or bring this to the desktop version of MTS. So anyways, we got that out the way in order to like set tempo up and all that, we're going to go ahead and add a MIDI track. And I always like to enable patterns to begin with patterns which i'll show you later on basically allow you to turn this into like a traditional block of midi on the timeline because mts likes to operate sort of differently so the first thing that we will do is we will pick an auv3 and for the sake of simplicity let's go ahead with pure synth platinum and we can make this bigger by hitting large view here Go to Pure Synth, I'll go to Upright Piano. I think they've got some really nice upright pianos there. And from here, I could go to the piano roll and I could draw in some MIDI by simply hitting Option and then drawing it as far as I want. And I got Snap On, which allows me to have things locked to the grid. But if I was to turn Snap Off now, I can move it off grid as much as I want really easily. This um, handle here lets you control the front, this one the back, and this one you can go ahead and move the note wherever you want. So it's really cool. But yeah, I'm going to turn snap on here. And what I could do is I could right click on this, or if you're doing this with touch, you could simply go to more. You can go to the, get that same menu and go ahead and expand this to a seventh or a major seventh or a minor seventh. So here's a major seventh. 
So real simple. So yeah, if you're really good with drawing in, you know all your notes, you can just draw in from here, no problem. But what I like to do, if I'm not gonna play it in, is I'll add a MIDI effect slot here. And what you wanna do to do that, let me go back and do that again, because that might have been a little fast. You're going to select the first slot. You see the second slot doesn't have it, but the first slot will, this dot right here, and hit Add MIDI Effects Slot. After you do that, we'll go to our AU Plugins, and we will select Adam Piano Roll 2. And I'll go ahead and make this have a large view. And the trackpad, unfortunately, and the mouse doesn't work with the latest iOS version with a mouse inside of Adam. So I'm gonna go with uh, using touch now within Adam, but Adam has all these different scales and we can um, scale lock our piano roll so that we could just draw really nicely and make sure that we're in key. All right, so now the first thing that we're going to do is begin drawing in some MIDI. So we'll go ahead and hit the add button here and we can just draw in a chord. We'll go ahead and skip every other note as we're drawing in. Keep it pretty simple. And we can go ahead and hit launch and now we can play this back. So we know that that's not going to sound too bad. So from here, we'll go ahead and count down a few of these to right here and we'll bring this to the three and again we will skip every other note bring that back and go ahead and see how that sounds and I'm gonna go up one more right here And let's play that back. All right, we could expand this to eight bars now. Go ahead and clone it across. Let's make sure it's going to start right at the five, which is the end of four bars. And take care of this little overhang right here that right and let's change this last note and let's see how that sounds now I don't like how that sounds at all, and I didn't like that it took that long to play that back. So what could we do about that? Well, we could go ahead and hit this listen button here. Then, we know instantly if it's something that we want to go with or not. And now I'm bringing all these notes down to um, drop them an octave. Which basically allows me to get a little bit, you know, more substantial uh, chord progression. Feels a little bit more solid. versus that. All right, I think we got it. So we know from our scales here that we are in an F sharp minor. So we will go ahead and change our keyboard down here to an F sharp minor. All right, now that we've got that laid out, we don't have any MIDI here. Our MIDI is still inside of Atom. Now to go ahead and solve that, we could do this in a couple of ways. One way is to go ahead and hit this um, menu here and hit apply to track. And this usually works, but sometimes it can be a little iffy. Sometimes you'll miss 
the first chord. As you can see right here, it missed the first chord. Why this happens sometimes, I don't know. Part of me kind of thinks it's probably related to like, um, like the buffer settings or something like that when it's doing the rendering. I think if I was to give it some space, it would probably work a little bit better. So let's go ahead and try to move all of these over a bar and see what that does. And let's go ahead and apply the track. Let's turn off the bypass, apply the track. And there it is, it works. And it will go ahead and do this um, continually for a while. But again, it's definitely not perfect, in my opinion, not ideal. So let me make sure all this MIDI data has been deleted. And what I like to do, let me go ahead and move this back to where it was, move it back a bar. And what I like to do is just export right here where it says export MIDI. And from there, I hit copy. Then I go ahead and hit paste, or you could hit control V. Now I could paste it at the zero. I tend to paste it at the one because I still want that count in. MTS doesn't have an official count in. So I have everything moved back a bar from the zero at the one. And then that operates as a count in. And then when I'm ready to export everything, I delete this gap inside of song mode. And it makes it really simple. But yeah, let's go ahead and paste. Allow paste. And there is our MIDI. Everything is intact, no problem. So we'll go ahead and make sure this is bypassed now. And we'll also unlaunch it just for safe measure. And here we are. So now that we got that, we can go ahead and make this loop if we want by hitting SEL down here, hit play looping. And we've got that going. Now, if we were curious about what chord everything was, we could go ahead and see what chord is this. Okay, we see it's a F sharp uh, minor seven. This is a B minor seven, C sharp minor seven. So very cool that we are able to see what exactly the chords are, you know, kind of give you a little bit of music theory knowledge right there on the spot if you were curious about what you got going on. And if you wanted to turn it into sheet music, no problem. Here is your score right here, if that's what you're better at doing. So very cool. Now that we've got this done, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to press and hold, go select part, pull it back, and then I'm going to turn this into a pattern. And this allows me to move the entire block of MIDI with no problem. Then if I want to double this up, if I was uh, using a pencil, I could pull down and add copy, or I go ahead and hit the Alt key and drag, and it'll automatically make a new one. So we've just doubled the length of our pattern like that, really nice. And then if we want to make it longer still, go ahead and do that. Really easy. So. I like working in patterns after I've built a part of my MIDI progression that I'm going to keep inside of this piano roll and I'm not going to edit it anymore. I will always turn it into a pattern. It just makes the workflow so much better. We'll go ahead and add another MIDI track and enable patterns again. Again, every time that I'm adding a MIDI track, I'm going to enable patterns because it takes away from me having to do another step later. And that's really what a good workflow is all about, is just everything being efficient and right there. All right, so the next thing we're going to add here is, I think we should probably add another piano. We go either way though, we could add a pad behind here. So you know what, I think I'll go with that. I'll add a pad, go to Waverly Tables, and we'll go ahead and make sure this is open and put Double tap this and you will put it into, see if you just tap it once you turn it on and off like a launcher. If you double tap it, you make it practice mode. And now we will be able to hear.
All right, so now that we got that, let us make sure, see where everything is. So let's go ahead and put the root note here, F sharp. And if we want to quantize this, we can go in to edit or we can hit command question mark and we just hit quantize, select our um, value that we want to quantize at. Well, let's go ahead and check out how it sounds still. Looks like it's a little too off grid. My timing was crazy because I didn't have the metronome on. So if we want to fix that, just pull it back. Pull that back like that and let's hear how it sounds. Turn it down a little bit. Not too bad, so we'll go ahead and keep that. And now that we've kind of got it set up again, what we will do, select part, new pattern. We will make it a pattern. That way we can go ahead and use it for whatever we want. And what I do sometimes is go ahead and name these the preset just in case. So go ahead and put and growth phase. All right, so now that's done, we have named these tracks. And a important factor in all this is the color coding. Right now, these are both like this teal color, but if we were to make this um, another color, we know that these are like elements that are gonna play off of each other, right? So what we would do is we would go open same color MIDI tracks in the multi-MIDI editor, and now we've got them both together at once we can kind of see what the relationship is, right? We're coming up and as we dip down, we see, okay, we're intersecting, you know, some of these top notes here. So if you want to see the relationship between, you know, all your different tracks that are the same color and you color code them based on like groups that I know that I want my, my pad or my piano or my chords and my lead to kind of interact with each other kind of different than I would do the drums, right? So you color code them to all match and then you open the multi-midi editor and it makes it really easy to go ahead and see everything. So now with that done, we'll add another MIDI track, enable patterns. And if we wanna add a metronome, we just go ahead and add track, add click track. And there we go. So we got that laid in there and again, let's go ahead and pull this back. Let's see how it sounds. Select all, quantize this. So we'll just keep that in the tuck, maybe use that for something else later. And what was the preset on this cold wave bass? And we'll go ahead and make this orange. All right. And the time being, we'll go ahead and make this a pattern. Bam. All right. Now let's get to let's 
some hi-hats. So what I would do to do hi-hats for this is you can go to audio layer. You can use whatever your app of choice is. And go ahead and I think these are two and a C2. Are they C3 or is it C1 maybe? All right, so these are two and a C1. So we'll go ahead and add a note and I will pull this all the way across to the end of eight bars. And then I will hit more, split in equal parts, go other, and I will make this 64. So now, So we've got a typical, um, you know, kind of little trap hi-hat vibe. Now we can go ahead and edit it a little bit. So let's go ahead and I think right here is a good spot. So we could go split in the equal parts right here again if we want. I'm going to split it into four. And I will take off one and then go ahead and drop these two notes down and then go ahead and make this like a little triplet All right, so got that. I don't think it's too bad. Let's go ahead and change this color. Make like a salmon color. We'll go ahead and name this HH for hi-hats. So now we can go and add track, enable patterns again. And again, let me make this a pattern before I even move on. Bam, pattern, new pattern. All right, good. So I can now move this however I want and we're good to go. Very useful for the hi-hats. Now I'll go ahead and make this the same color already. Now we've got a few choices on how we could go about handling the drums. We can go with the matrix sampler and the matrix sampler is not bad, but it does have a few things that are less than ideal. Well, what do I mean? Well, for instance, if we were to take a crate or select a few things at once, we would not be able to drag and drop all the things at once, but it will let you drag and drop things one at a time. So if you can live with that, it's not a bad option to go with. Another option that you could go with obviously is like a Satella. You could definitely do that. You could also use something like Koala Sampler and you could like completely sequence inside of that and then send the stems from that back into MTS that works fine as well. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to draw using the stock uh, matrix sampler sampler. And another good thing about this sampler is if you were to send this to desktop, you would be able to get everything back like you had it on iPad. So that's why I like to use it. It's really useful. Unfortunately, it cannot do chromatic playing, but it can, you know, you can lightly tune your stuff if that's what you want to do. So we'll go ahead and take that kick and let's go ahead and get some percussive elements here. All 
All right, let me go ahead and add a snap just to be sure. Add a rim as well. Go ahead and add that rim. Go ahead and add that snap. Let's add a snare. All right, so we have got our matrix sampler set up. And so what I do before I even start is I go ahead and just duplicate this a few times. And what this allows me to do is have every single item that I just pulled on its own track. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we can go to the drum sampler. We can play these in to the piano roll if we want, or we can go ahead and play it with our keyboard here or we can use there's a um another this matrix one is already mapped to it if that's what we want to do but since i'm drawing in i'm not too concerned about that what i'm going to go ahead and do instead is go to drum add instrument and it already has all my instruments mapped so i can just pick which one i want to work with and let's go ahead and start with a snap and just go ahead and drop this right at the three Super simple, and play that back. Now I can go ahead and make this a pattern if I wanted, which I will do now. New pattern. And then we can go ahead and copy and paste this down to the next one. And we will just change the instrument right here to a clap. Now, as I arrange this, I'll go ahead and can toggle back and forth between the clap and the snap, but we've got it laid in there now. So we can go to our next one. Go ahead and choose our kick. Turn off the reverb on that kick. Zoom in on our grid a little bit. All right, so we'll go ahead and leave those drums for now. And I think I also want to add like something at the end here. I think I want to Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and rock with that. And I'm going to bring all these up to the maximum velocity.
and do a little ramp right here. All right, I think we're good. All right, so we got that laid in there. Let's go ahead and add our next element. All right, so we got that laid in there, our little rim. And now we will go ahead and Make sure that all these are patterns really quick here. I'm gonna kick, make sure it's a pattern. And let me rename it as well. Kick. This was our snap. And I don't ever worry about naming the patterns because um, they don't unless I'm gonna like separate like different parts, have different part pattern parts on the same track. I don't really worry about naming the patterns, but if you wanna go ahead and do that, you could do that for sure. And this is our bongos, I believe. All right, so I'll go ahead and name these bongos and I'll also make them a pattern. You pattern and again this just makes life so much easier when it comes time to actually arrange this new pattern and it's our rim And again, we've made all these the same color. So if we did want to go and like edit them like together to see the relationship with everything, no problem. Super easy to do right there. Up here in this like teal color, you can see these are our hi-hats is showing the notes since we didn't have a one shot instrument for that. So it has all the things that are the same color. It's really cool. Or we could go into the piano roll, see it like that. So you might, for instance, when this rim hits, you might want to have the hi-hats react to that rim hitting. And let's see how that sounds real quick. Just curious. Not bad. For a more drum based track though, I could see it being super useful as I'm sure you probably can as well. All right, so the next thing that we are going to do now is we are going to, let's just go ahead and name it off top 808. And we're going to go into Drambo, which I think is a really good 808 host for a few reasons. And if you want a video on my workflow with Drambo as well, let me know down in the comment section. But yeah, we got our 808s already saved here. And we'll put this into practice mode. Drop it down. Let's go ahead and make this the same color as the instruments that we played above. All right, I think I'm gonna go with that one for now. And we can open the multi MIDI editor, select 808 right here. It's a little too low. And one thing we can also do, which I really like about MTS is if you want the note to be the same size, you can just click it first 
and then it'll automatically remember the size that you had the note. And then if we wanted to like move this up, we could go just F2, just like that, we got it. And make sure we are in play mode. Make sure 808 is selected. Now another thing I'm gonna do real quick here is I'm now gonna change the kick to be the same color just to make sure that my 808 is hitting when the kick does. It's important. You wanna make sure your 808 hits when the kick does unless that's the effect you're going for. Sometimes you wanna switch it up. And real quick, I'm gonna just turn off the reverb because the return happens automatically. Turn off that reverb on that 808. All right, so we know we've got pretty much the same pattern. We'll change it at the end. So we can copy and paste this over. Make sure 808 is selected. All right, so we see a change up already right here. So let's bring that back. Let's say we wanted to go up an octave for this part right here. And bam, we've got our 808 set up. Let's go ahead and play it back before we make it a pattern, just making sure that everything is right and that it loops properly. Not too bad, I think it sounds pretty good actually. So we will go ahead and make that a pattern now. We are good to go. All right, so with that done, let's go ahead and enable patterns again and add a new MIDI track. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to Steel Guitar Pro, go into practice mode. Click track, start this at the beginning. Make sure we're recording.
all right so there's definitely some parts in there that i want to go ahead and change but i wanted to just capture the essence of kind of where i was trying to go with the guitar vibe so let's go ahead and adjust some of these notes really quick here and this is what i do a lot i'll go ahead and get the rough idea down and then i'll go ahead and edit a lot of the notes so i'm part play live part quantize part leave it loose part go to the piano roll you know all that kind of stuff and what I really like about MTS is it is very flexible, allowing me all these different type of workflows. So let's go ahead and bring this back. And. bring this one out to here so a lot of times what I'll do is I'll find the right note and then I'll kind of put it there as a placeholder and if you hit shift as you move this it will go off the grid even with snap mode on If you move it up with the handlebar, it will stay unquantized for you. kind of like some of that looseness in there. Let's see how it all sounds. Let's see if changing the uh, velocity changes the feel at all in certain parts. metronome so i think the guitar actually sounds pretty vibey on it maybe i'll add like my favorite thing to add to things is like other desert cities let's go ahead and see what that does Go ahead and put some pan flow on this here. Bring this down. We don't want those extremities on the hi-hats. Let's bring that down a little bit. And then we'll go speed. We'll make the speed four.
All right, so I like the way that feels, so I'm gonna go ahead and change its color and also make it a pattern now. So it's easy to maneuver throughout the project, make sure everything got in it. All right, perfect. All right, so now let's go ahead and arrange this a little bit. What I always like to do is whatever like the first solo element is like that I'm gonna start a song with, I like to get that spread out to be by itself. So in this case, everything was done on eight bars, but I copied the piano across to be by itself over here. Now, now when I go to the song editor, what I can go ahead and do, right, is copy this. So what I'm gonna do is I see this little tail from my other pattern. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. So push copy here, go to the very beginning, then I'm gonna hit paste. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this little piece of guitar out. So now when we go to song editor, shouldn't see it anymore. All right, so we got that working now. Now what I want to do is go ahead and start to arrange this. Well, I know that after that vibey guitar comes in, I wanna go ahead and make sure that the snap keeps going after that dropout. So I'll go ahead and also bring these hi-hats over and I'm gonna clip these hi-hats in half. And the good thing is these patterns are not linked. So I can go ahead and let it breathe, see if they sound good coming in right here. Drop it out here. Let's bring our playhead here to be sure of where it needs to cut off at. So right there. All right, so from there, we're gonna go with our hi-hats again right here. Piano again, right here. There's a few methods to doing this. I'm just kind of going the, the slower way to make sure that um, I'm easy to follow. And when in doubt of where you're at, just move the playhead, right? The playhead is the same for all the channels, all the tracks at once. So you always know kind of where, like if you're trying to copy something to be exactly lined up, you know exactly where to copy it at. And let's get our first pattern here. And we will get to our clap, but first let's get to our kick. Bring that there. And I'm just copying everything across really easily. And because we have everything done in patterns, super simple. So just like that, now let's hear what we got.
All right, so what I would probably do is move this over here. And then get the claps ready to come in right here. then go ahead and let it drop out. And let's go ahead and bring that snap. And let's go ahead and see what it sounds like with the 808 and no kick. take that last clap, uh, snap out and then we'll go ahead and go back to our song editor and we will go ahead and bring this across to right here Let's see how it sounds All right, so if we like how all of that sounds, let's go ahead and do that hook again. We know we're gonna have some conflict with this guitar, but I'm not gonna worry about it right now. We'll just go ahead and get to the 57. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and deal with this down here with this guitar let me make sure I rename this guitar all right All right, so let's go ahead and make a pattern out of this now, and let's call this um, hook X2. So now we got our own pattern for that one there, and I think a little bit of extra got copied across on that piano. All right, so we got that. And now that we've got that sounding pretty good, let's go ahead and now go back to the beginning of our track, 
copy that across, paste that in. Now, of course, this isn't mixed or anything, but I'm going to now go ahead and play this back just so you can kind of hear out what we were able to do in song mode. Now, we can go ahead and delete this click track now that we know that we're good. So remove that and we'll go to the song editor and right here, this little gap zero to one. We'll go ahead and select it and we'll go ahead and delete it. And now the entire track starts at zero. And as you can see, we've got our song fully arranged. It was not that bad at all. Even though the approach is unique dealing with MTS, we were able to do it with no problem. So I don't necessarily feel the need to send the stems out to another app in order to do my arrangement. I feel perfectly comfortable using MTS, using the patterns to go ahead and do the arrangement with the song mode and all that. Hopefully it made sense to you. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Again, this isn't a mixed beat or anything. Just wanted to demo on the fly what my workflow process is for cooking up inside of MTS. And the beautiful thing about this is a lot of apps that are dual platform, you go ahead and send uh, this session to the desktop and be able to recall some of this stuff. Some of the uh, AV3s will save state and everything, which is great. But if you didn't want to go through like dealing with not having the same AEV3s, you can copy the new audio track and it will actually copy this entire MIDI into an audio track for you. And here it is right here. So you've essentially frozen the track and we'll go ahead and solo it here out sounds.
sounds exactly the same. So you go ahead and freeze all these things if you wanted to before going to desktop here. And you could also keep the MIDI data as well, which is great as a reference. So say you had like a really nice piano um, on desktop that you really, you know, this say the piano you use was just a placeholder, right? You're just trying to use it to capture the vibe. You want to send this over to desktop, use a piano of your choice. That's really your favorite to, you know, try to capture the feel you want, but you got the chords, you got the, the rough draft of the feel. You just want to take it to desktop, be able to use your favorite plugin. Go ahead and do that. No problem. Say you want to change a pad out, a lead out, no issue. All the MIDI stuff copies over there. You can swap out the plugins, no problem whatsoever. So a lot of powerful possibilities using multi-track studio. I love the editing. I think it's great. Allows me to go ahead and experiment. Not have to feel like I got to go do take after take after take. I can just kind of, you know, rough it, be able to edit the things that I want to edit and come up with some pretty cool sounding stuff. So hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you check out MTS. I think it's a really nice app. Very valid. One of the most powerful on iOS that I've run across. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. With all that said, about to get out of here. SciPadBeatMaking.com. Peace.